Father, please forgive me for these gains that the ERS is about to receive. All right, so as you can see, I got the front end pulled off the car and all that stuff because what I'm doing right now is uh, in order to get my aux fuel and my tune and big turbo and everything, in order to get it over 30 PSI, I have to take what my, my split second injector right now is triggered off of my um, sensor on the intake manifold. What I have to do is I have to replace the sensor right there on top of the intercooler. We'll get down here and we'll look at it. So I have the sensor right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm gonna replace this sensor. Um, and then what I'll have to do is I'll have to cut into this, uh, this nice electrical wiring that I did here. And I have to basically take the one wire from the split second that is triggered by this, reconnect this line to its stock configuration and then I have to tap into the um, the green wire with the brown uh, stripe and then that is now going to be what triggers the uh, split second you know for the uh, uh, I don't understand it all but basically that's what I have to do uh, in order to get over 30 psi because right now we're tuned up to that and we need to go further the engine can allow the turbo so we're going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some time. I'm going to try to clean this up and see if I can uh, open it up and explain the um, the wiring a little bit because uh, as most of you know, I did have a video of me wiring this all up, but I lost that footage. So it's not going to be a complete photo, uh, complete uh, edition of it, but it will give you guys a good idea of, of how to do it. As of right now, if you want to take a look, so I have the split second controller. As you see, I have the main wiring harness. It's ran down behind in between the battery box and the fuse um, box. And then uh, hopefully that's showing up. You can see it down there. It runs underneath the air box. And then it comes back up where I have it um, conveniently. Everything spliced right in here to this main junction on the wiring harness. Some people like to splice right in on, I didn't want to do that. I wanted everything to be neat. So now it's creating a little more work on my end so I can splice into the other one. but. That's where we're at. Um, I'll see you guys in a little bit and hopefully I'll have some, uh, I'll be a little further along. All right, so as you can see, I've got this exposed here. Um, you can see the harness for the split second. This here goes to the injectors. Uh, this green one here, that's your voltage input. That's what I'm changing today is this green wire. So the voltage input on this stock map sensor here I don't know if this is a 2.5 or a 3 or whatever it is, um, doesn't matter because I'm putting a 3.5 bar on the intercooler. So um, that is the uh, wire I need to tap into. The wire I believe I need to tap into is right here. It's green and brown. Green with a brown stripe, I think it's this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into this one with my uh, multimeter and I'm going to tap into the spot on the sensor and make sure that there's continuity to make sure that that is exactly the wire that I need to tap into before I go cutting a bunch of crap. So I have the, I have the um, female portion right here. There's the 3.5, or there's the, uh, the wire that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. It's on the far right. And then I'm gonna see if I can't tap into this without making too much of a mess here. And, uh, see if we got some some life here no well there we go I'm tapped into it but it does not seem to be giving me any continuity so that's not a good sign Yeah, so the problem is going to be finding the wire that I actually need to tap into. It may not be this one. So uh, the hunt continues. And we're back. So um, as you can see, I jacked up the vehicle because what I did is I wanted to um, follow 
this uh, female connector on that goes on to the intercooler. I wanted to follow that wire um, along the front of the uh, motor here and then it actually comes up in this elbow right here. I'm hoping this is coming out. There's this little elbow that comes up here because like you guys just saw I tried the uh, green with brown uh, wire in this bundle here and I got no continuity but now I have the the one end over there inside the uh, the connector and then there's another green and brown wire right here all right and then I have my voltmeter set to continuity kids are over there making a bunch of noise and as you can see there we go that's the right wire green and brown wire right here off of this elbow right here this little elbow that comes off the main the main junction here there's a little elbow that pops off the side there's two there's two bundles it's the bundle that's closer to your cams or closer to the you know the drivers driver's seat there's two little bundles here it's the back bundle off of this elbow off of the main junction again another overview I have the harness here which is wired into the uh, injectors or oh, well these are actually wired into the um, the actual these are the actual injector uh, clips is what these are and then you can see all the yellow wires here those are wired into the injectors um, so uh, that's how it fires it fires off of off of uh, those wires there and again I'm about ready to take off this green wire because this green wire is your voltage input I'm gonna take it from this map sensor and I'm gonna put it on the uh, sensor uh, via this junction right here so I don't have to go all the way down there I'm gonna splice into it right here and then obviously I'm gonna reconnect um, the green wire for the map sensor so you know that's good to go anyway so that's what I'm gonna do um, like I said I wish you guys would have had you know I wish I had the video where I actually wired all this up originally hopefully this um, this helps some people that are going to be doing split second and like I said the major reason that I'm doing this is because this sensor here is only rated up to 30 PSI um, at least that's what Troy Ramsey telling me is my tuner um, I want to say it's safely so that because everything me and Troy do is it, safe we're not trying to blow this motor so in order for me to go over 30 PSI which my big turbo can definitely do and this built motor can definitely handle so we're tapping into the intercooler that 3.5 bar sensor and I'm tapping into it right here the green wire with the brown stripe um, and I'm going to utilize the green wire on the harness from the split second to tap into that So we're back again uh, with the uh, RS. As you can see, here's my, my fuel rail. We are finally ready to turn that bad boy on. So I'm going to E85 now. So in order to do so, I have to turn on my split second uh, injector controller. In order to do that, I have to finally hook up the power to this. So what I've done is I've used a test light and I've tested both this um, fuse slot here and this fuse slot here. They both work, they both come on, they're both not on uh, when the engine or whenever you know the car is off. And then when I hit the start button, both of these power up so um, they'll work successfully. I got this thing at, um, at Napa Auto Parts. Mine didn't come with one, but I got that at Napa Auto Parts. So I'm gonna utilize that in the slot right here uh and it it pushes right in and the, the connections you know it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't sit like all the way down but the connections are in there so um i got the connections and uh, i'll hook the wire up and we'll be good to go so what i've done is i have drilled a hole right here i don't know if you guys can see that but i drilled a hole right there and I'm going to cut a slot in the lid so that that way I can push this wire through and then we can, uh, so then that way I can, you know, take the lid off and stuff like that without having to worry about cutting this wire. Uh, so I'll show you what that's like when it's all said and done. But that's just where we're at right now. And then we'll go into flashing it and, and everything that needs to be done in order to run E85. 
All right, so I got the hole drilled in the side of the fuse box there where I ran the wire. And then obviously I connected my, my new fuse here in this slot, um, which is going to power up the split second timer, which I have open right now. There's really not any indicators showing whether or not the power is getting to it or not. So I'm not really sure if it's, uh, if it's getting power right now. It should be, but I'm not sure. Um, I, I imagine when I plug the serial cable in and I actually go to flash it, uh, then hopefully um, I'll get some type of an indication that it is powered up. If not, I'll have to finagle and find out which fuse uh, outlet will work. But right now that's what we got. I got the slot in the side of the, of the um, cover so it'll sit down on there and it won't crush that. I'm going to go and uh, get the uh, serial cable and we will come out here and flash the split second timer and then I'll unplug it again because um, I have to go and fill up with the 85, flash the car, then turn on the uh, aux fuel at that point, but I want to have it flashed uh, before I do that, so that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so here we are. We are going to flash the split second now so I have it plugged in um, in the port or in the you know the fuse terminal hopefully that's good to go we're gonna find out so I'm gonna turn the power on to the vehicle and then I'll show you how to use this split second software so let me turn on the power of the vehicle real quick there we go All right. Now I'm gonna see if I can if I can show you how to do this. Okay. Now that we have the um, serial cable plugged into the computer and plugged into the controller, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to uh, to actually load the thing. So I don't have a desktop icon, but the program is called R4. It comes on the CD with the with the uh, controller itself. I suggest just loading that up. Um, I did download one online and it did not work. So um, I put the CD in my desktop, dragged it over to a thumb drive, and uh, then loaded it on this laptop, and here we go. So here's the split second uh, R4 program. It's old school, uh, like MS DOS kind of stuff, but whatever. So we're going to go up here to File. You go to File, you go to Open Customer. Once you go to Open Customer, I'm going to open it up to my split second folder uh, and this is my latest one um, I label them one through whatever uh, you know your tuner is going to label them whatever and then you, when you save them you can save them as whatever this is what my tuner calls them was E85 PTE so I just label them one through whatever so I'm on four right now I'll go ahead and open that up when you do that you'll see that some of this stuff auto populates the the name auto populates some notes auto populate the date is never correct whatever um, from here you can go to options and you can look at a couple things system settings um, I don't know what it is default but uh, basically everybody's saying that you want this to be on voltage and this to be on an additional injector controller in case you're doing this yourself um, which I, I don't do it myself um, this is how it comes tuned from Troy uh, so there you go you can check system settings and then you can also go to options and check engine settings and this is gonna you know you have the opportunity to change it from different cylinders and whatnot uh, as far as I understand these EcoBoosts we run them two cylinders two stroke um, I don't really know why that's just the way it is I'm not a tuner so here we go anyway so that's how that comes Anyway, then the final thing you have to do is you have to, you have to make sure you know what COM port you're in. Um, a lot of people don't know how to do that, so you come down here to the Start menu. You go to Device Manager. Once you click on Device Manager, you bring it up. That's going to bring up a menu here. Then you can go down here to Ports right there. And then there's my USB to serial, it's COM port 3. If it, for some reason, was not between 1 and 8, you can actually right-click it and rename it. Go to Properties and Rename the Driver. But 
three is fine it has to be between one and eight i'll show you why here in a second so i'm in com three ecu this only gives you opportunities one through eight i got three so we're good to go and now i'm going to hit this connect to ecu button hit connect bam this is your symbol right here that shows that your this comes up it lets me know that we're on um, and that we're we're good to go this is the disconnect button we don't want to do that yet so now we go over to maps fuel maps this is what I loaded and basically I just click this next this button the second one to the right so not read data from ECU we're actually going to write data to ECU it's gonna write it's gonna ask you if you want to overwrite and all that make sure that the engine is not running of course hit yes and now we're writing map A and map B once those are complete that is it you have um, officially written your map to the controller and then obviously you have to get your access port map or whatever you have to to match that for aux fuel all right there we go both maps have been written simply come up here and exit out of that come right here and go ahead and disconnect from ecu i'll unplug my serial and that is it uh thanks for stopping by guys uh hopefully we'll be getting these numbers up soon later